Why? I'll tell you why. Because now you got something in your heart that's changed your perspective. And we talked a lot about changing your perspective. But when you get God's perspective, when you get what He wants in your heart, it changes you. Right. It makes you different. That's I don't right. want to be the same no more. That's right. And that's what happened to Paul. But I like this the verse later in there. We talked about when Paul was preaching. His talk was different because he was now preaching boldly. He wasn't persecuted no more, but now he's preaching for Christ. Imagine this. Imagine if we, let me still think of somebody that's, that we know that ain't saved, that's hate Jesus. Charles. Charles Manson. If Charles Manson came out of jail and said, okay, I've been saved, I've been redeemed. Now, I know I killed 72 people and cut them up, put them in the freezer. That wasn't Charles Manson. Yeah, he ain't gonna think this here. Yeah. Okay, Jeffrey Dahmer. I know I killed people a couple of them in prison, but God has saved me, and now I want to preach the word. How many of us would believe that? But if we saw his lifestyle, if we gave him, that's what happened to Paul. People knew who Paul was, but they watched what he started doing, and they said, he, he's not the same no more. So it changes our action. It changes our focus. I told you that he started preaching immediately. He was tearing down the church. Now he was preaching Jesus is the Son of God. He is the real way. He is the one. He is the who he said he was. And so it makes me a different person. But what I like about a vision is that it makes me different. But the motto of the church is guess what makes the difference? Listen, all the stuff that Paul had been through in the past. Uh, it, 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 the Bible says that Paul was a, a Hebrew, he, a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was learned. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He had all these accolades behind his name as a Pharisee. But all that stuff made the difference in his life because he knew the Bible. He knew the scriptures. So he knew that there was going to become, there was going to come a savior that was going to save the world. He knew that. But he was the right person for the right job at the right time. His difference made the difference. And that's what we want to tell people at this church that's is that right. your difference is what's going to make us complete. That's right. If all of us were the same, if all of us had the gift to teach, we have a bunch of teachers, but it would be a bunch of confusion because we could never agree on nothing because everyone had a different perspective. But because we are different, because we are different. Because God gave us different gifts. He gave us different talents. When we put that stuff together, it makes one body. And that's what Paul was, uh, the, the example I got from Paul was that his difference made the difference in his life. His difference, because of all the things that he had been through in the past, all his learning, all of his ability, it made him perfect for what God wanted to do to him. So what does that mean for us today? All of your experiences, your failures, your defeats, your high points, your low points, your successes, all that stuff combined makes you perfect for what God wants to do through you. That's right. God had to do something in Paul first. He changed him. He made him different so he could do something through him. I like that. Here's, here, here's, here's something that we got to understand, though. And this is where I've been all this week. Because Paul was perfect for what God wanted to do for him, because Paul was different, it also made Paul a target. If you look at, 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 at verse 29, it says, he would often talk and argue with the Jewish people who spoke Greek, but they were trying to kill him. Listen, because they knew Paul's past, because they knew what he used to do, and now, the same Jewish people that he used to persecute the church for, he's telling them about Christ. They say, something ain't right, and we're going to kill him. Listen, don't be afraid when you become a target for people. Because that's evidence that God is working in your life. Don't be afraid when folks start to talk about you. Because that's evidence that you're on the right track. Don't be afraid when the devil puts his whole attack seem like against you. That's just the signal that you're on the right track. Yes. When you're depressed, upset, can't seem like to get it right, stressing, things are out of order in your life, that's okay. That's just the signal mm -hmm. that you're on the right track. Because when God changes you, when God makes you different, it makes you a target. Because people knew Paul's past, they didn't like what he was trying to do now. They said that um, they was going to kill him. If you keep on talking that stuff, we're going to kill you. People try to kill you, but here's what I want you to see. Your biggest enemy, Satan, that's who's the cause of a lot of our trouble. When God gives you a vision, 
When God's put something in your heart to carry out and give you a reason to live, put some meaning behind your life. Satan goes out of his way to discourage you. I like what Luke 22 and 31 says. This is Jesus talking. He told, he told Simon, Simon, he was later called Peter. He said, Simon, Satan has desired that he may have you. Why? So he can sift you like wheat. That word sift means to tear apart. Because we have a vision, because we God wants to do something in us, we can do something through us, Satan, our adversary, wants to tear us apart. That's why he causes division in the church. And it's not about you, Sharon, but it's about to tear apart God's church. Yes, it's about to tear yes, apart what God wants to do through us. Mm -hmm. So anytime that we talk about doing something great for God, you know Satan is going to be in the midst. You know he's going to be there. He's going to do everything he can to keep us right where we are because he's not interested in the kingdom of God advancing. He's not interested in the church becoming unified. Look at it. I'm, I'm telling, we talked about it last week, but we divided. So last week we said that Sunday morning is the most segregated time the devil will be. Because Satan is doing his job. He's trying to tear us apart. Then John 10, 10 says, you know, that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he wants to do. He wants to kill it. He wants to steal it. And he wants to destroy it. Because God has made us different. Because God has changed us. We become a target so Satan can tear us down. But listen, it's not about us. It's about what he sees that God puts in us. So the stronger Satan attacks you, the more you should be excited that God is doing something in your life. The stronger Satan fights against you, the more it should excite you to keep on pushing forward. The more you feel discouraged, Kathy, the more you get broken hearted, Charles Edna, the more hard times you have, that's only a signal that Satan is trying to stop you from getting to where God wants you. He's trying to stop you from, from, from realizing what God is doing in you. Because if he can stop the seed, if he can kill the seed, that's he can right. kill the tree. That's right. If he can kill the seed, he can steal the harvest. If he can kill the seed, he can destroy the field. If he can kill the seed, the seed that God put in us, the vision, if he can kill that, then he kills your meaning for living. He kills your meaning for living, and that's it. So he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But what I found out, and this is my personal testimony for this week, because I know God has given me a vision, because I know God wants to do something in me, the hard times make me depend on God even more. And that gives me encouragement. That gets me excited. Because I'm telling you, this week has been rough. And I'm, I've talked to uh, some other people. They say, we've been rough on them too. But Satan is busy, but that teaches me to depend on God. One of the things that I'm learning in this week number four of, of being a pastor is that Satan ain't going to let up. And I was sharing with Keith is that this week is the worst week I've had in a long time about feeling useless, about feeling like what I'm doing doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how hard I try. What, what, what's the use? It ain't going to come to the end of nothing, no way. So what's the use in studying and trying to be a better husband? And trying, it's, it, but what it's taught me is that when I'm weak, God is strong. And I'm learning slowly but surely. I'm learning day by day. I'm understanding more and more that it's only because of Jesus. I like the scripture that said it's in him, who Jesus, that we live, move, and have our being. So when I understand that, yes, Satan is going to attack me because God made me different, I can depend on Jesus. Why? Because the Bible says he is faithful. God is faithful. And we've talked about this in Bible study many times. Think about the times in your life. Look back over your life. How many times have God let you down? How many times have he not come through? It may have gotten rough. It may have looked dim. It may look like you weren't going to make it out. But God is faithful. Yes. And he has proven yes. himself to be faithful to me. Because I'm telling y'all, as God is my witness, today I want to call and cancel. I said, you know what? It's the first of football season. I didn't give him two hours of sleep. Let's just, you know, let's just wait till next week. It's Labor Day weekend. It's, but God is faithful. That's and it's teaching me to depend on him. It's teaching me that, that the more I try, the worse things get. But when I look to Jesus, the author and the perfecter of my faith, 
things are going to be all right. Yeah. Then one thing that I like about it is that we talked about God wants to do something in you so he can do something through you.